Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's lesson is on scientific notation. Scientific notation is when a number is written as the product of a factor and an integer power of 10. Now, this little detail is key. The factor must be greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. In other words, when we write 425 million, this number here, this 4 and 25 hundredths times 10 to the 8th, this number to the left of the decimal point, the 4, is what this A is. And so it has to be bigger than 1, so A is greater than or equal to 1, and A is less than 10. So basically, between 1.0 and 9.9999, how many ever those could go. So, use these rules to express a number in scientific notation. If the number is greater than or equal to 1, the power of 10 is positive. If the number is between 0 and 1, the power of 10 is negative. So if we look at our guided examples first, write each number in standard form. 5.34, or 5 and 34 hundredths, times 10 to the 4th. Well, this times 10 to the 4th is positive, so we're going to move our decimal point that is currently here this many spots to the right. So four spots to the right. One, two, three, four. And they ended up with 53,400. But if the number is a negative, that is the exponent is negative, 3.27 times 10 to the negative third, we're going to move this decimal point back to the left this many times, and they end up with 0 0.00327. Now, do we got it? As we look at example A, 7.42 times 10 to the fifth. This positive 5 means we're going to be making the 7.42 larger. It's a number that's quite large, so we're going to be moving our decimal point to the right. So the first thing I like to do is to rewrite this 7.42, but also adding some zeros to this, to the right, because that's where my decimal point's going to move. And if you ask yourself, how many zeros do I need? Well, if you were to write five zeros, you'd have more than enough. So we're going to move this decimal point here five spots to the right, and you can literally just kind of draw them in. One, two, three, four, five spots to the right. So as I rewrite this answer, this is going to be seven, four, two, and I have one, two, three zeros here. One, two, three. So 742,000 is my answer. What about B? 6.1 times 10 to the negative 2. The negative 2 means we're going to be moving the decimal point to the left. And so as we rewrite this 6.1, know that we're going to be moving the decimal point to the left. So here I can actually put my zeros on the left side. And again, if I put two zeros there, that'll be more than enough. So as I move this decimal point back, one, two spots to the left, my new answer is 0 0.061, or 61 thousandths. What about 3.714 times 10 to the second? Well, if I rewrite this 3.714, the 2 is going to mean to the right, since it's a positive. And as I move my decimal point one, two spots to the right, my final answer here is 371.4. Now, a common misconception, a common mistake that we make with scientific notation is that we look at this exponent, five, and automatically assume there's going to be five zeros in the answer. That's simply not the case as we look here. 742,000, we only had three zeros. So don't make that mistake. When you show your work, if you want to put the five zeros there, 
as you move your decimal point to the right five spots, you can. Like I've said, if you put those five zeros there, you'll have more than enough zeros. So that was going from scientific notation to standard form. What if we want to go from standard form to scientific notation? Write each number in scientific notation for examples 3 and 4. In example 3, we have 3,725,000. What they do is they look at where the decimal point is now and count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 spots to end up with a 3.725 times 10 to the 6th. Since this is a number that is larger than 1, we're going to use the positive exponent. What about example 4? Well, our decimal point needs to end up right here. How do we need to move it? Well, they moved it 1, 2, 3, 4 spots. And that's why they ended up with 3.16 times 10 to the negative 4th. So now as we look at the got it questions for guided examples 3 and 4, we want to take these numbers from standard form 2, scientific notation. What I'm actually going to do is rewrite this so I have a little bit more room. Just show my work. Right now my decimal point is here. And what I like to do is look where does my decimal point need to go for scientific notation. Well, when I write a number in scientific notation, that number has to be between 1 and 10, or well, less than 10. So if I move my decimal point to right here in between that 1 and 4, that will get the job done. How does my decimal point move? How many times? Well, it's going from the original 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. Which means this number written in scientific notation is going to be 1.414, and I'm going to omit the zeros, times 10, and now remove this 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 times. So this is going to be 10 to the 7th, and we're going to make this positive since this is a number that is larger than 1. So 1.414, or 1 in 414 thousandths, times 10 to the 7th is our solution for D. What about E? Well, as we rewrite this one, 0 0.00876, again, look where we want our decimal point to go. If we created this to be 8.76, that would get the job done. And how does the decimal point move? Well, one, two, three times. And so now this is going to be 8.76 times 10. And we moved it three times, but it's going to be a negative 3 since our number here is between 0 and 1. Now as we scooch over for F, Let's rewrite this here. And where does our decimal need to move? Well, 1.14 would be a good answer in scientific notation. And how does it move? Well, just one spot. And so this answer is going to be 1.14 times 10 to the negative 1. And it's again a negative since this number was between 0 and 1. So, to go from standard form to scientific notation, let's rewrite our numbers, count how many times do we move our decimal, and it's going to be a positive exponent if our number is larger than 1, and negative exponents if our number is between 0 and 1. Now let's look at guided example 5. Refer to the table to the right. Order the countries according to the amount of money visitors spent in the United States from greatest to least. Well, whenever I order, 
I like to know how I'm ordering, and this says greatest to least, and so I need my largest number first, my smallest number last. Now these are all in scientific notation, so it's actually relatively convenient. We have our times 10 to the 7th, 6th, 6th, 7th. And so what they did here was they grouped the numbers by their powers of 10. We had 10 to the 7th in a group and 10 to the 6th in a group because anything in scientific notation, at least, times 10 to the 7th, is going to be greater than anything in scientific notation times 10 to the 6th. So if we can order this group, knowing that 1.06 is larger than 1.03, so UK then Canada, and then order this group, 7.15 is bigger than 1.83, so Mexico then India. So, UK, Canada, Mexico, India. Let's go to our got it. Some of the top U.S. cities visited by overseas travelers are shown in the table. Order the cities according to the number of visitors from least to greatest. Well, let's first organize these. We have our 7.2. 2, 1 times 10 to the 5th, and we can group that with the 9.01 times 10 to the 5th, if we group these like the example did. And then we have our 1.3 times 10 to the 6th, and 2.2 times 10 to the 6th. Again, if we group these by our powers of 10, we have our powers of 5, and our powers to the 6th. And since we're going from least to greatest, we can say, all right, our 7.21 times 10 to the fifth is the smallest. Then our 9.01 times 10 to the fifth. And then 1.3 is smaller than 2.2, so next comes our 1.3 times 10 to the sixth, followed by 2.2 times 10 to the sixth. And now if we get these back into the cities, the 7.21 times 10 to the 5th was Boston. 9.01 times 10 to the 5th was the Metro DC area, so I'll just abbreviate and write DC. 1.3 times 10 to the 6th was Las Vegas. And lastly, 2.2 times 10 to the 6th was Los Angeles. So I'll just kind of sneak in LA here at the end. So group these by the powers of 10. Notice I want to least to greatest. Our powers to the fifth are smaller than our powers to the sixth. And then within the groups, 7.21 is smaller than 9.01, and 1.3 is smaller than 2.2. So first organized by your powers, then organized within. For guided example six, if you could walk at a rate of two meters per second, it would take you 1.92 times 10 to the eighth seconds to walk to the moon. Is it more appropriate to report this time as 1.92 times 10 to the eighth seconds or 6.09 years? Explain your reasoning. Well, what they came up with is the measure 6.09 years is more appropriate. The number 1.92 times 10 to the 8th seconds is very large, so choosing a larger unit of measure is more meaningful. This example is all about choosing a unit that makes the most sense. I mean, both numbers are the same, but to tell someone it's going to take you 6 years to walk to the moon versus it's going to take you 1.92 times 10 to the 8th seconds, most people are kind of, kind of look at you funny if you use the scientific notation in this example. Not that scientific notation is always wrong. It's not. Sometimes it is more useful, but it isn't more useful in this example. And so as we look at our last got it question for the lesson, in the ocean, the seafloor moved 475 kilometers over 65 million years. Is it more appropriate to report this as a rate of 7.31 times 10 to the negative fifth kilometers per year? or 7.31 centimeters per year, explain your reasoning. Well, this number here is such a small amount of kilometers per year. 7.31 centimeters per year, more people could probably relate to. 
So for this answer, I would say, first off, 7.31 centimeters per year. And the reason is, this number, overall it's a small number, whether it's 7.31 centimeters or 7.31 times 10 to the negative fifth kilometers, it's a very small number. And so choosing a smaller unit of measure is more meaningful. Centimeters is a smaller use. Excuse me. Centimeters is a smaller unit of measure compared to the kilometer. And since we're dealing with a small number, choosing that centimeters is better in this case than choosing the kilometers. Now, don't always think that it's going to be the one without scientific notation. Sometimes the unit with scientific notation will be your best answer. But that is it for this lesson on scientific notation. Good luck.